One of the things that was said earlier was uh, regarding the changes being made to policy and planning as a result um, of changes in people's behaviour with regard to transport. Beyond anecdotal evidence, which we've heard uh, quite a bit of today, what long-term uh, evidence, what, what, what deep evidence is there and research has been done to suggest that these uh, changes in behaviour are likely to be sustained post-pandemic? Well, the pandemic's only been going for six months. It's very hard to have deep long-term evidence. Uh, there's pre-existing evidence about what, uh, how to change travel behaviour. Uh, and I think what the pandemic has done has shown that this can be it has been accelerated, obviously, through external events. Uh, and it throws up an opportunity to try and sustain some of those beyond the end of the pandemic you know what why is it that we need to have the a470 clogged every morning with people going into the same office uh, for example welsh government office at Cates park an excellent case in point you know 2000 people going in there every morning from uh, from the travel to work area around cardiff now at the moment there are fewer than 200 people going in there now those these people are perfectly able to work effectively from home. So that has busted a myth that existed previously. That wasn't practical. It wasn't productive uh, to be able to do that. So that has created an, a new set of evidence that we didn't know existed before, which we're, we're sort of feeling our way through to see if that can be sustained. So the kind of approach you're taking is a, is a build it and they will come kind of approach rather than based on any uh, certainty about the future. Yeah. Well, do you have any insights on the certainty of the future I'm not aware of? Uh, we, we, well, it's, it's up to you, Deputy me. Minister, to answer the question, not me. Yeah, well, I'm saying, I've, I've tried to explain, Kevin, that you know, we, we are in an unprecedented situation. It has thrown up a series of challenges. It's thrown up some opportunities for changing the way so, we work. So the question I'm asking is, have you got any data that, um, that, that enables you to build your strategy uh, for the, for the post-pandemic? And the, the answer at the moment is there isn't any consensus. Well, no, there's a lot of evidence about travel, travel behaviour change and how that's achieved, which is, which is uh, evidence-based and peer-reviewed and, and, and solid. Can you uh, provide so, that to us? That would be helpful to, to see it. Well, this committee has looked at it before and published reports based on it, but I'm ha happy to point them to you, yes. Thank With you. regard to the changes as a result of the pandemic? Well, Evan, we are six months into the pandemic, so we can show you six months of data of what's happened in the pandemic. I'm not sure what else you want from us. So, well, I, I suppose my question is, are you concerned that some of the changes in policy are based in what you hope will happen rather than what you expect will happen? No, I'm, I th uh, there, look, there's a series of things going on in the pandemic around travel behaviour. Some of it, you know, is a short-term impact for around public transport, for example. So we dearly hope that after the pandemic, and, and based on international evidence, which we, we think it is likely that over time people will return to their old behaviours. Uh, and we need to make sure that the infrastructure is still there so they're able to do that.